never ceases to amaze me the level of racism that Joe Biden is allowed to perpetrate on national TV. And so today in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you have Joe Biden talking about what is the, what is the biggest danger that exists in America? For many minorities, such as myself, my family is originally um, Hispanic and partly European, right? families from Puerto Rico, as well as Spain and France. And so when you look out at anybody's background, whether you're white or black or Hispanic or the vast uh, different shades of brown, etc., or Asian, that most of us can look back into our genetic material and realize that we all, as far back as you can go, have a mixture within our blood. It's why the Apostle Paul could say that God out of one man made all nations, right? And so for people who go to church or for those who have accepted that there is a creator, namely especially under the Constitution and the, the various laws that the founding fathers put in place the different documents the fundamental belief that was held was that all men were created equal right and they were endowed with certain rights by their creator in fact not only do americans hold the same sort of mentality but even in other countries they believe in a creator and as a result people have certain rights that are endowed by their creator meaning that man does not have the right to infringe upon those rights because they're given to you by a creator and this is why i've said in numerous numerous other videos that when people no longer practice the belief in a creator neither do you have said rights because the foundation for which you have those rights are built on the fact that there is a creator and if there is no creator then neither do you have said rights you have to fight and die for those rights and in those circumstances the only thing that matters is might makes right that's the only thing that matters we can logically conclude that there is a creator and as a result we have the right to live and all the different sort of rights that are endowed under the constitution and under the bill of rights but if you remove the creator from the foundation of what a society is built upon then it becomes more practical to remove individual rights from either blacks or hispanics or whites etc right because at the end of the day my might is what makes right it's not that I, i'm obedient to a creator it's that i'm in charge and i decide who is good and who is bad very similar to what in the very beginning of the bible when the bible says that adam and eve had partaken of the fruit of the of the tree of the knowledge of good and bad and then god proclaimed here man has become like us knowing good and bad basically stating that man after choosing to disavow uh, the belief and the authority of the creator and to go in their own direction that god said that man has now become like us being able to judge for themselves what is good and what was bad and as a result this is what we have we have the different sort of governments that have attempted to rule over mankind. And as a result, the book of Samuel uh, prophets that the, the what God had foretold in the book of Samuel, it comes to fruition time and time again, where people set up men over themselves. And as a result, the people suffer on a rare occasion. The people will rejoice. But for the most part, when you look back at human history, it has been one failed system over, uh, you know, from one system to the next, it has failed its people. And so in our time, we are witnessing a very similar, uh, similar experience where Joe Biden can call upon specific groups, primarily white individuals, and say this. The joint session of Congress, according to the intelligence community, Terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today. Not ISIS, not Al Qaeda, white supremacists. The joint session of Congress. Now, granted, I would ask Joe Biden, can you show me some of these white supremacist groups that you are referring to that is national danger, right? It's not the outsource, it's not the outer. 
uh, groups. I mean, many of these groups despise America because of America's relentless push for one war after the next, going into countries under the guise of weapons of mass destruction for your protection for the purpose of stealing opium and, of course, oil, or just to control different areas, basically. And as a result, they recreate, in essence, the government creates their own enemies. And then, of course, they point back to those enemies as insurgents or people of interest or terrorists, etc., because it it's, it causes the mind to think in a particular direction, that these are individuals that hate us because of our freedom, when that is not the case. The reason many of these in groups despise America is because of the relentless uh, interference that America has in their day-to-day -day lives. And so as a result, uh, people tend to despise those you know, who interfere within their lives. And this very similar outcome is happening today. It's why Joe Biden feels so comfortable. I mean, this happened in Nazi Germany where you had Hitler who looked nothing like the people that he was leader over. And basically, we see very similar tactics with what Joe Biden is in essence doing, where he can basically look out to the minorities as the leader, imagine, imagining himself to be the leader of the minorities and then saying that our, right, our real issue is the white supremacists. That are, that are your real problem the so pointing to hispanics and looking at blacks or asians etc or other brown skinned individuals and say the real threat in our country are the white supremacists but he can't point to any of these groups or any of these outcomes right we can't sit there and say well this is an outcome of this particular group they just make blanketed statements and it's for its course it's for the purpose of utilizing other minority groups like for example black lives matter or antifa and then they can utilize these terrorist groups that are within the country and to stir up trouble within the country all under the guise of combating white supremacy when the real white supremacists are those like joe biden who are in positions of authority right i mean realistically speaking at the end of the day if you're a business owner and something goes wrong within the business someone does something out of line at the end of the day, the buck stops with you as the business owner. But these politicians never take responsibility for the outcomes of the policies that they put into place, right? For example, Joe Biden's uh, policy that primarily uh, resulted in many young black men being thrown in jail for things like drugs, right? And so instead of helping these individuals to lead a different life, instead of funneling money into the community to help these individuals perhaps start businesses so that they in essence own things within the country so that they don't feel like they're foreigners right they feel like they're slaves within their own land they actually have land they actually have businesses they actually have a say in what goes on within their neighborhoods but that is never on the table the only thing that is on the table is for animosity and strife and the combative mentality that they want americans to have towards one another and this is perpetrated by politicians is for the purpose of allowing the common citizen to be too busy fighting one another instead of joining forces right instead of joining forces to combat the real evil that is the american government it's why you see <clears throat> there was a proposal by i think it was 120 previous generals who were saying that really what america needs is a is a in essence a coup a revolution which, I, which has been the case for more than 100 years, where America has needed another civil war to combat against the deep state, the politicians who are, in essence, against the people. You can see it in the policies that Joe Biden makes every time he signs a bill that calls for more spending by the government, where they spend trillions and trillions of dollars. All it does is it robs you of your buying power for the dollars that you earn. Every time that they, every time that they've, and this has been going on ever since they took the dollar off of the gold standard. Instead of keeping God's money, i.e. gold or silver, which has been utilized for centuries, they took it off and they, what did they institute? They instituted a financial institution of bondage, which is why we have the bond market, right? That's, that's a, literally what they instituted. They instituted a currency. Currencies are just, are nothing more than bondage right because all it does is it allows them to print 
this money and then you are responsible for working off the debt it's slavery no matter how you want to refer to it and this has been going on for quite some time here in america you know the original goal was that all people were set free but then they introduced a system that we put you back into slavery and so all americans even though blacks might feel that they are slaves within this country the reality is is that every single american and anyone who is tied to a fiat currency is in essence a slave to the system it really does amaze me when you think of what christ jesus did where he died so that people would be set free and of course the devil and his system seeks to re-enslave you and this is why you see stuff like this where you see individual politicians who can sit here and say him as a white man can say that the real problem in america is white supremacy and if that's the case then why don't you step down and let someone else take the reins because you're clearly not competent enough of a job and you are more likely to be in a position of supremacy than someone who is brown skin but of course that doesn't happen most of the most of the politicians who work in in the government are millionaires like oh, i think it's like 53 percent these individuals really don't make all that money in terms of their salary but it's a completely different story in terms of the criminality what they do within the policies that they set right where i think it was like 40 percent of just the democrats were owners of for example pfizer and this was recently this recently came out where uh, there was a good majority of them that were owners of the pfizer company as a you know as obviously as a result of the policies that they put in place for the vaccine and so they benefit off of holding these particular stocks you had bill gates heavily involved with for example the company moderna and i've talked about this in numerous videos on how you know these companies that come out of nowhere are in essence handpicked by the government people kind of set some policies these different companies in essence get you know benefit as a result it's just one criminal act after another and eventually americans are going to have to make a choice on where they're going to stand or they're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into slavery and that's just a reality you 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 really are slaves you have been slaves just slaves fighting against each other in essence in the same camp right we're all on the same plantation the plantation that is america